Some people ask me where I get ideas for my videos. You know, uh, I've got a, you know, a wide range of topics to talk about, mainly about 3D printing and prop making, but I don't talk a lot about various things. And uh, well, this one came out of a conversation on Facebook. Greetings, Dave here, DCBFX. I want to talk about something that came up uh, in the conversation. I was uh, chatting with my friend Ken, who I haven't seen. Uh, Ken, uh, not Ken Lamb, Cam Rice. Uh, local prop maker to me, a really great maker. You know, he makes really cool things. He uh, won with a Rocketeer jetpack. At the last time we got together at Toronto prop party, he made a really cool 3D printed jetpack and fished it phenomenally. Guy's a great painter. Does it pretty awesome. Wolverine cosplay too. Anyway, we're talking about, he's asking me about printers, you know, resin printers. He looked at some of my videos, said, I know you haven't used them all, but, you know, what do you think of uh, this and this? I said, well, you know, it's Creality. This is a good printer. They make a, this one's good. I'm sure the, the lesser one's pretty good too. You know, I even said, this has got the easiest FEP, you know, and you don't need to worry about tuning it. And he's like, tuning your FEP? Never heard of that. So I thought I would do a quick video on tuning your FEP. The way a 3D printer works is, see this is clear, here I am, and the UV light shines through, this is full of, full of resin, it shines through and it cures that part, the part sticks to the plastic or the FEP. Uh, FEP stands for FEP, I don't know, I'll look it up. Um, what it does is it does it and then the plate pulls up and what it's called rips the part off the FEP. So when you hear a 3D printer going, as I've said before in various things, you know, it's just satisfying to hear it go rip, rip, rip. So I do big things on the, uh, the Hallett Sky, just rip, rip, rip. Especially on the base layers, you really hear it because the base layer, you know, basically almost covers the whole plate depending on what you're printing. If you don't hear that rip, you have a problem. Now, if your FEP is too loose, it's got uh, you know, some sway to it, and then the part kind of goes like this and doesn't pull off. So if you tune your FEP to the correct tightness, which you can tell by frequency, then you have a nice tight FEP. So it shines through and it comes off and everything's good. Here's how I do it. So there's an app, or I'll show it over here, called Spectrum. Uh, close that. What it does is it reads, sounds. So you have the, I'll just put my phone in my leg here and I'll just do it here. So you have it listening to this and I just use the round end, nothing sharp, of uh, this is just one of the allen keys that comes with the printer and just tap it lightly to get the frequency you want. Now depending on the printer you have, you know, um, like the Hallett Sky will have a different frequency than, than this one, but this other one, this mono, one around uh, between 250 and 300. Now, I've had no problems with this. Uh, some people also say up to 325, it depends on it. But if you're into like the low range, you've got a real problem with uh, your FEP, it's way too loose. And all you need to do is just tighten up. You've got the screws here and you tighten up and you're good to go. But that is a real easy way to deal with your FEP. If you're having problems with, say your prints are sticking all the time. So like they're sticking to, let me turn that off. They're sticking to the, um, the vat and not going anywhere. They're not coming off, not coming off on the plate like they're supposed to. You might wanna take a look at that. That being said, as I said earlier, this, the Hallett Sky has got the easiest FEP replacement I've ever done because there's like 14 screws. So by the time you get them in and you have to just, you know, get them all in sort of finger tight and then you start going corners and get it all done. By the time you get them done so they're all tight, done. Like I had the whole thing done in about five minutes and then uh, and print. Rip, 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 rip. So it worked really, really well. So if you're having problems, as I say, with your print sticking, that's your fix. Now it gets to the point where your FEP will get stretched too far and you're done, time to replace again. But if you stick to that sort of um, criteria for doing it, so you're up in that 250, 275, 300, 325, up in that range, you're golden. 
So hopefully that helps any new printers out there, people who are playing around with a resin printer are really not sure what they're doing or they're, why is this failing, why is that failing? You know, you've got things to try. You've got to uh, make sure it's level, make sure everything's going on, make sure your resin is not super cold, all these other things to try. But when in doubt, check your FAP. It's easy to just empty it out and, you know, give it a quick thing. The Spectralizer app for iPhone, it's free. I'll put a link in the description so you can download it if you want to give it a try yourself. So that's my video today. Um, again, printing. It's all I do these days. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy it. And actually, I got a comment from Crowley. Uh, apparently, my other rep I had got let go and didn't tell anyone else. So I put my video up on this and the, the water wash resin, and no one knew about it from Crowley. But uh, over the weekend, they went, oh, hey, good video. Thank you. So do more. That's all for today. Hope everyone's having a great day. We'll talk to you all later.